Hello, my name is Fox and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. Gladiator Games Teams Tournament took place in Logan Home, Australia from the 11th to the 12th of November 2023. The tournament had five rounds with 105 players and 525 games played. Brody Middleton won the tournament with their Ultramarines. Jacob O'Donnell and their Thousand Sons came second, with Eric Latherus running Tyranids in third. Big congratulations to all these players and big apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The winning Ultramarine list takes many of the strong units we have seen in previous Space Marine lists since the Codex's release. We see the Vanguard Spearhead for the first time in one of our tournament spotlights. The detachment gives your units minus one to hit, and the benefit of cover when targeted by a ranged attack outside of 12 inches. I think this is a very nice durability buff, which is useful for your entire army. We see the very popular Apothecary Biologis to lead this big six-man squad of aggressors. This combo is very popular to get lethal hits on the aggressors, and the blade-driven deep enhancement would give the whole unit infiltrators. If that wasn't enough, Calgar himself can also lead the squad, adding an additional three models. Calgar himself has the standard graphics profile, with a 2 plus save, 6 wounds and a 4 plus invul. He allows the unit he is leading to shoot and charge when it advanced or fell back, he generates a CP in your command phase, and he has a 4 plus feel no pain while his honor guard are alive. He brings some powerful melee with the gauntlets of Ultramar making 6 attacks, hitting on 2s at strength 8, AP 3 and damage 3. He makes a further 2 attacks at range at strength 4, AP 1 and damage 2. His 2 honor guard have the same profile, with toughness 4 and 3 wounds. They make 5 attacks each in melee, hitting on 2s at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 2. The aggressors and characters should pack a big punch in melee, with good shooting as well thanks to the lethal hits. The enhancement will allow the unit to start in the midboard, giving the opponent a big threat to worry about right at the start of the game. We had the lone operative lieutenant, and a Phobos Librarian. I am sure the Librarian joined the Infiltrator squad, meaning the unit can't be targeted outside of 12 inches. This is a very useful ability, allowing the Infiltrators to stay out of harm's way and focus on taking objectives. Speaking of which, there are two squads of scouts to help with that. The Vanguard Spearhead synergizes well with these units. For example, the Stratagem Guerrilla Tactics allows you to place up to two scouts or Phobos units or a single normal unit into strategic reserves at the end of your opponent's fight phase, giving the list a lot of added mobility. We have a single unit of Jump Pack Assault Intercessors, which are very efficient for their 85 points. We have two max squads of the popular Inceptors, with one taking the Plasmas and the other taking the Bolters. For the big firepower, we start with two Ballistas Dreadnoughts. Then missiles and the last cannon shoot out to 48 inches, with the last cannon making two shots, hitting on threes at strength 12, AP3 and D6 plus one damage. The missile launcher has two modes, with the frag making two D6 attacks, with blasts at strength five and one damage. The crack rockets make two attacks, at strength 10, AP2 and D6 damage. They can re-roll a hit roll when attacking a target which is not below half strength, which is very useful on the low quantity of anti-tank shots. Finally, we have a six-man squad of Centurion Devastators. They have toughness 7 with a 2 plus save and 4 wounds, although they only move 4 inches. The aforementioned Guerrilla Tactics will allow this unit to go into strategic reserves, which will help with their poor mobility. The Grav Cannons make 3 shots, hitting on 3s at strength 6, AP 1 and damage 3. They have Anti-Vehicle 2+, plus, which makes them very effective against armor. Their special rule allows them to re-roll hits of 1, and they get full re-rolls to hit when the enemy is within range of an objective marker. The second place Thousand Sons list takes a plethora of sorcerers. We see the demon Primarch of Zinch, Magnus the Red, who is of course the Warlord. He is a destructive force on the battlefield, as well as being a force multiplier. He gives all psychic attacks within 6 inches plus 1 to hit and wound, which includes his own. He also has free buffs which he can choose one of at the start of the battle round. He can give one enemy unit within 24 inches hazardous on their ranged weapons. He can give all Thousand Sons units within 6 inches plus 2 inches on their movement or he can give himself minus 1 damage against non-psychic attacks. For me, the minus 1 damage buff seems the go-to option. It partners quite well with his toughness 11, 2 plus save, 16 wins and 4 plus invul, making him pretty hard to take down. His psychic attacks can dish out some serious damage, hitting on 2s at 24 inches. The gaze of Magnus is 3d3 attacks at strength 9, AP 2 and flat 3 damage. It also has devastating wounds. He also attaches Zeech's firestorm, making d6 plus 3 blast attacks at strength 5, AP 1 and 2 damage. The plus 1 to wound he gets really helps him punch up against armor with his relatively low strength psychic attacks. The plus 1 to hit is useful if your enemy ever has a minus 1 to hit, such as stealth. For good measure he is also a monster in melee, making 7 attacks at strength 16, AP minus 3 and 3 damage with devastating wounds, or 14 attacks at strength 8, AP minus 1 and 1 damage. As these are psychic attacks he will get plus 1 to hit and wound in melee as well. It means he will also make full use of the detachment rule either getting lethal hits, sustained hits 1, or devastating wounds. 
You can use some nice combos to give the weapons of other units psychic and then turn off someone's armor save with the Twist of Fate ritual. When you include Magnus's buffs in the detachment rule, if the enemy unit doesn't have an invulnerable save, they're going to have a very bad day. Next we see Araman on a disc of Zinch. He gives the unit he is leading plus one to wound, which is useful if they are out of range of Magnus. His most powerful ability allows him to use a ritual for zero cabal points once per battle. The aforementioned Twist of Fate costs nine cabal points, so having the ability to use this for free once per battle is very nice indeed. He has a precision psychic attack, which has a rather small chance of taking out a lightly armored character, and he hits reasonably hard in melee with five attacks at strength seven, AP one, and damage three. We see a single infernal master with the arcane vortex enhancement. They give the unit they are leading sustained hits one, and can change the result of one of their hit, wound, or damage rolls to a six once per turn. Arcane Vortex gives the bearer's psychic weapons plus one strength and damage. Finally, we have a tree of exalted sorcerers, with two of them taking an enhancement. All of them give their unit a four plus symbol to improve on the five or six plus most Thousand Suns units have. The on foot sorcerers have a rubric regeneration ability. You roll a d6, on a one, your unit suffers d3 mortal wounds, but on a two to five, the unit regenerates one model. If you roll a six, you regenerate two models instead. The exalted sorcerer on Disc of Zinch has a similar mechanic. However, the effect is different. On a roll of 1, you take the mortals, but on a 2+, plus, you can halve the movement characteristic of an enemy unit within 18 inches, a very useful ability to have. The Umbralific Crystal allows a unit to essentially go into Deep Strike in your command phase and come back in the movement phase once per game. This is very useful to have for a reasonably slow army. Finally, the Lord of Forbidden Lore Enhancement allows the unit to cast the ritual even if it has been used by another Psyker this turn. The large number of characters will be leading the 5 squads of Rubik Marines. I would imagine the on-foot sorcerers led the Big Ten Man squads to make use of their regeneration ability and the Umbralific Crystal. Finally, we see two squads of Zangor with two Zangor enlightened. The Zangors move six with the toughness four, a six plus save, one wound, and six plus invul. The enlightened have the same profile with a five plus save, two wounds, and a much quicker 10 inch movement. The blades make two attacks in melee, hitting on fours at strength five, AP one, and damage one. For each objective you control with Zangors at the end of your command phase, you roll a d6 and gain a cabal point on a 4 plus. The enlightened can make a d6 inch move once per turn when an enemy ends a move within 9 inches of them. The mobility is useful for this rather slow list, and the great bows add 2 attacks out to 30 inches, hitting on 4s at strength 5, AP 1, and 2 damage, with lethal hits and precision. The fire from all the enlightened might pick off some lightly armored characters, and it is useful to have some snipers when the opportunity to target a character arises. The third place Tyranid list takes a host of characters in the Synaptic Nexus Detachment. The detachment allows you to select one of three Synaptic Imperatives to be active till the next battle round. Each one can only be active once per game, and they affect all units within Synapse range. The augmentation gives units a 5 plus invul, the vitality gives plus 1 to advance and charge, and the slaughter gets plus 1 to hit in melee. With the detachment focusing on buffing creatures in Synapse range, it is perhaps not surprising we see a lot of character bugs. We have the Neuro Tyrant as the Warlord, which improves your Shadow in the Warp by subtracting 1 from the Battleshock test. In the command phase, they can make two Tyranids units within 18 inches, always in Synapse range, which is rather useful for this detachment. The Power of the Hive Mind Enhancement improves the AP and Strength of Psychic Attacks by 1. This is a quite a nice boost to their Flamer, with it making 2d6 attacks at Strength 6, AP 2 and Damage 2. The Death Leaper is a lone operative with Infiltrators, Stealth and Fights first. They have an 8 inch movement, with toughness 6, a 3 plus save and 4 plus invul, protecting 7 wounds. You gain a CP when it kills a character with its 6 precision melee attacks, which hit on 2s at strength 7, AP 2 and damage 2. In addition, when enemy units are within 6 inches of the model, you worsen their leadership by 1, and in the battleshock step of their command phase, they must take the test when below starting strength, which is quite a nice buff when you're in range. The Parasite of Mortrex moves 12 with toughness 5, a 4 plus save and 5 wounds. It does have Lone Operative and Stealth to protect it at range, and it can Deep Strike if desired. For its special ability, it spawns D3 Ripper Swarms if it kills a model with its Barbed Ovi Proster. It makes one extra attack, hitting on twos at Strength 3, AP 2, and Damage 3. It may have a very low strength, but it makes up for that with the Anti-Infantry 3+. It makes six additional attacks at Strength 5, AP 1, and Damage 1. Finally, at the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy unit with an engagement range to take a Battleshock test. Next we have a Turbigon, with no Turbigons to make use of its buffs. It does have a big profile with an 8 inch move, toughness 11, a 2 plus save and 16 wounds. In melee the Talons have a strike and sweep mode, making 4 attacks hitting on freeze at strength 9, AP 2 and D6 damage for the strike. It makes 8 attacks, 
on the sweep at strength 7, AP 1 and damage 2, which should be quite useful against elite infantry. The synaptic control enhancement makes this already considerably durable bug even harder to take down with minus 1 damage. Finally, we have a winged Tyranid Prime with the Charis enhancement. It is a 9 inch aura, which worsens the leadership of units within. I would imagine the Prime was leading one of the two 10 bug squads of gargoyles. We see a single Biovore with the Spore Mine Launcher, which allows you to spread Spore Mines around the map. I think at least one Biovore is auto include, as the mines really do help with objectives. We then have two Exocrine, which have the same profile as the Turvagon, with one less toughness, a free plus save, and two less wounds. The Bioplasmic Cannons have a nice general profile, making D6 plus 3 shots with Blast, hitting on freeze at strength 8, AP free, and damage free. It also has Heavy to give you plus 1 to hit if you remain stationary. In your shooting phase, you can select one enemy unit hit by your attack, and the rest of your army gets reroll hits of 1. The shooting is pretty dangerous in of itself, with the reroll ones being a very nice bonus on top. The three Warlocks have the same profile, but move a bit faster with 10 inches. They have Deep Strike, and when you set them up from Deep Strike, you roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches. On a 2-4 to four, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. On a 5+, plus, they suffer 3 mortal wounds and must take a Battleshock test. With 3 of them, that's quite a lot of mortal wound potential, and it is no slouch if it can get into melee. It makes 16 attacks, hitting on freeze at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 1. It then makes 1 extra attack with its jaw, which is at strength 5, and free damage, but has anti-infantry 4+, plus and devastating wounds. It should true through the toughest of infantry, such as Terminators or Gravis. It wouldn't be a psychic list without two squads of Zonophropes, which give units within 6 inches a 6 plus invul. They also deal D3 mortals to any unit which fails a Battleshock test within 6 inches, and one model regains up to D3 wounds. With all the minus leadership abilities in this army, it shouldn't be too hard to trigger. Their War Blast has two profiles, both shoot out to 24 inches and hit on freeze. The Witchfire has Blast and makes D3 attacks at strength 7 AP2 at damage D3, with the focus version making one attack with lethal hits at strength 12, AP3 and D6 plus 1 damage. We have one squad of Tyrant Guard, which I imagine we're protecting the Neuro Tyrant and his enhanced flamer. We then have three Neuro Lictors, which move 8 with Tufters 5, a 4 plus save and invul with 7 wounds. They make 6 precision attacks in melee, hitting on 2s at strength 6, AP2 and damage 1. They are yet another unit with low narrative, stealth and infiltrators. With so many included in the list, it must have been rather annoying for their opponents. Like the Death Leaper, you gain a CP if they kill a character, and you can make one enemy unit within 12 inches take a Battleshock test in your command phase. While within 12, Battleshock enemy units have minus 1 to hit, and your models get plus 1 to wound against them. As stated, this army has a lot of ways to worsen leadership and give out Battleshock tests, so I would imagine this ability was very useful. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played factor with 9.52% of players taking them. Aldari, Chaos Space Marines, Necrons and Tyranids are all in joint second, with 7.62%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour, with the key at the bottom of the screen. The Thousand Suns topped the charts with a 90% win rate. There was only two players, with one coming second and the other coming 16th, which explains the very high win rate. The single Admech player got an 80% win rate, with the third place finisher Tyranids on a 65% win rate. The Orcs are the last faction in blue, with a win rate of 60%. Imperial Knights get a 56% win rate, with Votan, Astra Militarum and Death Guard all on 55%. Aldari only get a win rate of 52.5%, which is way below their average across all tournaments. Chaos Knights and Tau get a win rate of 51.4%, with Space Marines, Sisters and Gene Silver Cults winning half their games. I am happy to see that the Necron Codex must be very close, as they only managed a win rate of 25% in this tournament. The single Wordbearers player gets a win rate of 60%, with the Red Corsairs only on 20%. The Black Templars get a win rate of 66.7%, followed by the Blood Angels on a 60% win rate. The tournament winning Ultra Marines only get a 40% win rate. The tournament winner is responsible for 5 of the wins, with the other 2 players unfortunately only managing 1 win from 10. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.